Hello and welcome to this week's show where we are in interview mode. We're going to be speaking to an individual who was a big part of the Stunt Challenge programs between 1982 and 1985. This week we talk to Derek Thompson. Uh, you may know Derek in a capacity as a racehorse commentator. Uh, he's also um, a journalist and pundit and uh, for many years was part of ITV Sport and Channel 4 Racing, now working successfully at the races and Sky Racing and all sorts of bits and pieces. He does it all. Uh, and so who better to speak to than Derek to tell us his point of view about how he got involved in the thing in the first place. Uh, Stunt Challenge seemed like such a strange contrast to the work that he'd been doing, but it was a great chat. It was lovely to speak to him. And this is how it went. What I always found interesting, Derek, I mean, I appreciate that, you know, you were a, uh, the, the, a, a, fair, a big name as far as racing was concerned in those early periods. Uh, I've got some terrific recordings of you with course commentary with Peter Bromley uh, doing all of that terrific stuff for the for the 73 National, for instance, and various other uh, great races that, that took place. Uh, you 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 moved to uh, to uh, World of Sport, wasn't it, ITV in about 1981. Right. So how did you get involved? This is the point from doing what you were doing and what you were known to do from a horse racing point of view. How did you get involved in the show? It's a very interesting question. Basically, what it was, I had uh, well, I was BBC Radio Sport, and there were people like Desmond Liner, mm -hmm. Jim Rosenthal, Chris Martin Jenkins, right. all those sort of people. You know, the famous names of the seventies, eighties. You know, the living legends. They're they're all incredible, and I was lucky enough to work with them. And then the, a job came up on World of Sport, presenting ITB Racing, mm -hmm. and. Um, my best mate, Bob Champion, the man who won the Grand National in 81, he told me about it. He said, did you know there's a job going on ITV Racing? I said, didn't. He said, apply. So I applied. And I got the job, incredibly. So I left BBC Radio Sport, went into, into ITV, joined World of Sport. Uh, do you remember Dickie Davis? I do and all that, yes. You know, yes. uh, the man with the, the white bit silver in his hair. Fox. What a, the <laughs> silver fox. What a great pro he was. So I used to do the ITV 7, which means we did seven races, horse races on ITV every every Saturday. Uh, you know, then the wrestling would come on. Do you remember uh, oh. Kent Walton saying, hi, grapple fans, how are you doing? Yes. So we were on between, say, one and three. So we did two meetings every Saturday, four races from one, three races from another, and it was an ITV7. And there used to be um, a 10p uh, pick all seven winners. And if you got all seven, you won thousands of pounds and all that. It, it was great, absolutely yeah. good fun. Anyway, also at, the, at that time, um, they invited me to present a program on Thames TV. Do you remember Thames TV? Yeah, and uh, it was called Thames Sport. Every Thursday night it went out. So every Thursday night in London, uh, 6.30 to 7, I presented Tim Sport, which is, you know, all the sports news around London. Mm -hmm. And while I was doing that, the actual uh, office where I worked in Tim Studio, next door was uh, This Is Your Life. They used to do This Is Your Life there. Right. And also one of the directors came up with an idea and he said, why don't we do a stunt challenge? I said, what? A stunt challenge? You know, get all the, it's all right, these film stars making millions and all that. But the guys who do the real work are the stunt artists. Right. You know, the guys who risk their lives every day, the men and women, uh, to make, you know, these superstars. So I said, what a good idea. And so he's the guy who said, let's do a stunt challenge. And I'd like you to be the co-presenter. And that's how it started. And when I turned up, Lewis Collins was my co-presenter. Yes. Do you remember the professionals? Oh, yes, yeah? absolutely. So him and I turned up and, and we did it. And it, that's, that's where it started from. Because that was down at the first one was at Pinewood Studios, wasn't it? Um, they they did it as a sort of um, now. Well, I know Lewis was there. Now, I, I, where where were you? Were, were you were, were you in in uh, in Black Park? Were you? Yeah, no, we we, we sort of uh, we shared a caravan together. You you know those sort of stars caravans where they the get Winnie Bago, thought, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Winnie Bago. I thought, whoa, this is all right here, you know. And there was Lewis, you know, his established star. So it was it was good fun. Uh, I presume I got it because of the horses, you know, yeah. involved with horses, and there was, a, you know, they they was uh, they were riding and all that. So it was a, it was a bit of everything. It was just 
it was just marvelous to be involved. And I, I, I'm a great film buff. I just love watching films, you know, with uh, popcorn dribbling. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> you know, watching things like The Magnificent Seven, um, the Bob Champion story, Champions, mm. you know, that, that came out in, I think it was 1982, 12 months after he won the National. And uh, things like the Zulu and all that sort of stuff, James Bond, obviously. And, um, and when, when I came on the Center Stunt Challenge, I found out it was these guys who were doing the stunts That's for right. James Bond and, and everybody else. So oh, it, was, it was just incredible. And, and, and what they did, they did stunts. And we had uh, a competition, you know, the best stunt wins it. Right. Well, it's difficult, you know, so you've really, these guys had to risk their lives to try and win stunt challenge. I can't remember what the first prize was, but it was great. So the first, we pri- well, I think the, the, the prize had kind of stayed, I think it was a thousand pounds, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Which was a lot, a lot of money, money, a lot of money back still then. Is. And, John, and a, a, a um, uh, <laughs> Rocky Taylor won that first show, of course, in 82 and was given um, a, a rather splendid uh, uh engraved bowl now i'm not quite sure whether there was a connection mm. with triton showers then i know there was further down the line they mm. were sponsoring the whole thing and uh, when I, I i told you of course i, I helped write uh, rocky's book and i went to his house yeah uh, one yeah. day and i thought what's that fruit bowl over there i recognized this fruit bowl and that was it that was his stunt challenge award you got massive oh. fruit in it but uh, which i thought was rather lovely but of course you were there from from the um uh, they had a jousting sequence, didn't they? And we had what? a jousting. But I tell you, I met I met Rocky the night before. We were all staying at the Holiday Inn right. near Heathrow, mm-hmm. and I'd gone at the bar or the, the restaurant, and we were just talking away. And you know, I said, "What's your name?" He said, "Rocky Taylor." I said, "Oh, what do you do?" He said, "I'm a stunt guy." Oh, I said, "I'm presenting the stunt challenge." So that's how we met, right. and you know, became a good mate. And he loves his racing, loves his horses. He does love and, his racing, and, yeah. and that's where I, that's where it all started. It's, I mean, it's really the seed was sown there. And what was interesting from a televisual point of view anyway, you've got um, a, a very recognisable face in in Lewis because obviously the professionals mm-hmm. and the movie that had just come out at the time, which was Who Dares Wins, which a lot of the guys yeah. had worked on. You've got you yeah. there as well. And people would recognise you from being on uh, on World of Sport and, and the ITV7. Uh, and so there was a nice combination of the two. And obviously the show went down terribly well, I assume, because they, they brought it back again the following year. Now, was that was that mm-hmm. planned initially or was it just planned as a one off? Do you remember? It was planned as a one off. That was the incredible thing. But it went down so well. Right. And I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. The people who were watching it obviously enjoyed it. The stunt guys enjoyed it because they could win money. But at the same time, it would give them a bit of whoosh because yes. they needed it. And, and there were fellas like, I mean, Rocky Taylor. Uh, what else was it? Martin Grace. Yeah. He used to be, what was he? Roger he Moore, was Roger Moore's stunt double for many years. Yeah. He was Roger Moore. Uh, mm-hmm. Martin Grace also was, was uh, well, Martin. Uh, Greg Powell. Greg Powell. The great Greg Powell. You'll know him better than anybody. He's the, he's the greatest stunt coordinator in the world, isn't he? He's certainly he's certainly up there. There's no two ways about that. And certainly, as far as from from a family history perspective as well, he's uh, it, it runs in the family there most definitely. And I tell you what, I'll never forget his dad called Nosha, Nosha, Nosha and he man. was from the East End. All right, Tomo. All right, my son. Oh yeah, hey, hey, you know. You said I like that, like a bat guy in the betting shop. So you go a little chip and all that. And I said, what did you used to do, Nosh? He says I was a heavyweight boxer. You know, you took him on, yeah, left Very right handy. over the shop and and all that. So I thought Nosh was was magnificent. And Greg, um, you know, as as you were saying, went on to become the stunt director, one of the greatest stunt directors in in film history. Absolutely. And interestingly, from from those first couple of shows, so everybody was really kind of coordinating their own stunts. There wasn't anybody kind of overlooking uh, as a coordinator doing it. But they did change that slightly further down the line, didn't they? Because the format of the show changed. I think the first the first three years. Right. This is what I'm going to do. I remember. um, Let me give you an example. Uh, In 1983, Royal On. Uh, the fellow from Yorkshire, yeah. he won the show by reversing the car through the articulated lorry. Now, of course, they would have all coordinated their own. They'd have helped out. But then in 85, mm. it was a different because you needed an overall coordinator, which Greg took that role. And it was very much the way that they kind of used it in the movies where each stunt double doubles the actor in a different sequence. 
And what was interesting about this was it was fascinating for me to see the work that went involved. I remember we were driving an articulated lorry and I said to Greg, I was doing a recording a piece in the, in the cab with him and I used to be a lorry driver. Right. When I left school, so I could drive. But this was a massive articulator. So what are you going to do, Greg? He says, I'm going to turn the articulated lorry over at speed. I said, right. Now, if you've ever been in the cab of articulator, it's quite high. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard enough to drive, never mind to turn over. And I'll never forget it. It was a, a sort of, I think it's called a cannon roll. And they loaded uh, uh, barrels of water into one side. So when it went over, it would topple over, so right. to speak. And yeah. they, they shot the wooden uh, things down. So when Greg driving along at 60 miles an hour, turned right-handed on the wheel, pressed the button, those things would come out underneath the back of the lorry. So push it up sideways and, and all that. And when you're doing 60 miles an hour, you, you, you've got to be strapped in, obviously. Well, Otherwise, I, you could have got serious hit. But I, the, this is what these guys do for a living. And I thought, what a way to earn a few quid. You know, I'm a commentator, you know, with the horses and all that. But these guys could get killed. You know, they were jumping out of flats, you know, 50 floors up, mm. you know. And, and they came down. I, I, what was the girl? She, she was Denise she was really Ryan. Good. Denise Ryan That's was right. the girl. That's right. And she yeah. came out, you know, screaming. But you know, she had the pulley on, so she we could cable. Uh, yeah. You cable, but you couldn't see that. And yeah. I remember going up and overlooking. It was we did a block of flats in West London and um, took the window out. And I had a little look out. And I thought, there's no way <laughs> you'd go. You know, Art there's no way you'd go down. Stuff, yeah. uh, there's no way. So the bravery. The, now I work with jockeys who are the bravest people in the world, riding horses at 45 miles an hour over mm. fences that don't give. But these guys were were just amazing. And we had a girl came on another girl, Dorothy Ford. Dorothy Ford. Yeah. She was absolutely outstanding. And I remember she won it one year and she, she turned this car over. I said, what are you going to do? He says, are we going to turn the car over? I said, what about twice or, you know, on the side? She said, no, a bit more than that. And she drove it about 100 miles an hour. I was standing next to the cameraman. We had about five cameras ready to go in for the interview with her. And she pressed the, the roll, whatever. And she must have done about eight rolls. And it literally came to within a few yards of us yeah. and was just going to come over the top and, and crush us because we we're ready to run. And then it rolled, it, it, it sort of went back. And I thought, thank for that. And so I, <laughs> uh, and I went in with the microphone and interviewed her, literally as she was upside down, you know, and then she got out and took her helmet off. Um, and she looked beautiful. She was Sophie Lorenz double. She, she was, was that's you right. Yeah. Do, yeah, do, incredible. I, I seem to remember the footage. Uh, it's a, a pipe ramp she was using, where where that's traditionally it. you would put the wheels up. What you do is straddle this pipe. It's got a kicker on the end, which flicks the car over. And that's of course, right. you've gone in for the interview, and she's just took her helmet off. And the first thing I think yeah. the first thing she said, it's not very flattering catching me like this, you know. <laughs> exactly. Um, but what, also, what I thought was interesting was you were mentioning there about uh, looking at it from the stunt performer's point of view and how you realised that they were taking risks. Now you'd spoken to Greg. There's an interview of you and Greg together uh, on the eighty five show and there was a clip i think from the movie sahara where he jumps a car on a horse uh, if you remember yes and uh, yeah. and you said oh you know you, you're jumping horses so well I, I certainly wouldn't go around on the sort that you go around on referring to race horses and how <laughs> yeah. they so he was looking at it from a different point of view thinking i can i can you know i can take as many precautions as necessary here but the race boys don't you know but but that is a very good point because you know with a with a car or a lorry horsepower on four wheels, yep. you, you you're in control basically. Exactly. When you've got a horse on four legs, you're in control. That's but right. remember, you've got another you've got a horse, and say you're doing forty five miles an hour, and you want to say, "Come on, we're going right handed. We're going to jump that fence next." And uh, that horse says, "Oh no, we ain't." No, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> precisely. There's not a lot you could do about it. But I, I was so so impressed with these guys and stunt challenge. I I, I love doing it. And John, when you you rang and said, "Come on, let's do a piece about it," it just brought the memories flooding back. These, mm. these guys, I have the highest respect. For. Exactly, and and this is why the, this type of. Uh, um, the type of program that I do and, and, and to try and, you know, bring back to people and say, look, when you see all these trailers, 
all the good movies and all the mm. lousy movies, they have all the good bits in the trailer mm. and all the bit, good bits in the trailer nine times out of ten are all the action sequences. Well, all of those action exactly. sequences are done by these guys, you know. So that's the reason why oh. we, we want to try and do it. They, they, they are superb. And, and, and so when you have the star of the show, you know, say like the whoever plays James Bond, mm -hmm. um, there's no way he can do this because just say he gets injured, just say he breaks a leg or whatever, doing That's a pipe it. roll in, a, in his Aston Martin, then they've got to stop filming for six months. Precisely. And of course, you can't do that. No, no, no. So that's, it's all that's money. You see, you can't afford to do exactly. it. Exactly. That's why the stunt guys are the most important part of, of any film. And you, like me, I love all action films. You know, I love to see, bwah, bwah, you know, and, and all that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, so they, they'd probably love to have doubled for the loves in the love scene, but of course they weren't, uh, they weren't <laughs> yes. to do that. Yeah. Well, I think it was Roger Moore always used to say that he uh, he did all his own doubling and he also did all his own lying. So uh, that was his, uh, he was quite happy to let Martin do all the tricky stuff and he would do all the stuff that he was quite capable of doing. By the way, he turned up on Derby Day, I think it was 1995, oh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. What a what a lovely, lovely man. He had his morning suit on, very smart. And I did an interview with him and it was it was lovely. I'll never forget it. You know, one of the world's greatest stars. And he was so normal. And that's what I like about these guys, the stunt guys. They're, they're just people. They're real people. Yeah. But they, they work so hard at it that, you know, all they get is a tiny name that rolls up on the film. And by the time you've seen the name, it's already gone. Whereas the big stars are, you know, living in the Hollywood houses and all that. These are the guys who do all the work. And all, what a profession. Well, also, interestingly, from that point of view, is that, of course, back in those days, back in the 70s and the 80s, there weren't that many. You know, so those credits yeah. that you looked at, well, there was only maybe 10 or 15 or maybe 20 at a push who were doing all of the action. Yeah. Nowadays, what with motion capture and various other bits and pieces, you've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of names that go by on the stunt thing as well, so, yes. which is which is impressive from that point of view. But then you look at the stuff that went back and went, what, they did all of that action, then there was nine of them? You know, that's crazy. I, it was just amazing. And also what I liked, it took a bit of time to set up. So you had to be patient. Yeah. You, you know, you couldn't just say, right, I'll be ready in half an hour. Right. Um, I remember we're down in the docks in the east end of, of London. And um, that's where Greg turned the, uh, the, uh, the, lorry, the lorry over. It was sort of in the an old warehouse area. So there was a lot of room there. And, you know, he had to, you know, he, he really had to do the job properly. Because obviously you, you only get one chance at it. And yeah. if it goes wrong, but, you know, it goes wrong. So it's got to be spot on. But these guys, just did it like, say, you know, the banker goes into his office in the morning, he goes to the bank. It, they were like that. They, it was their office. It yep. was the, what they did. And they didn't worry about it. Obviously, they wore protective clothing, you know, and all that sort of stuff. And if it's dangerous, you've got to have the helmet on, obviously. Yes. But, um, I, 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 you know, I know it was a long time ago, but I'll never, ever forget these guys. Marvellous. Well, that's why it's an important part of... of uh, uh... Uh, of the whole procedure to have you involved in this because you are a massive part of this. You know, you, you arrived in 82 and you went through 83, 84 and 85, and you were a constant, yeah. uh, a, a constant face on that show where people could associate you not only with racing, but also with the stunt challenge programs. Um, 85 was the last one uh, mm. that they did. Of course you, you were doubled yourself. Graham Crowther doubled you being thrown out of a moving vehicle, as I seem to remember. <laughs> It's right. And by Jove, I'm glad I was double. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I, I, you know, I, I, I used to ride in, in, in races and all that. So, you know, I, I like to think, you know, I can. And then you think, yeah, I could do that stuff. No way. No way. <laughs> yeah. You know, like looking out of the, you know, the 85th floor. Think, yeah. OK. OK. That's yeah. Well, like, you, you do that in all that. So my respect for these guys is absolutely incredible. Those rocky. Dorothy Ford, Greg Powell, Martin Grace. Who were the others? Uh, uh, Helen Caldwell. Well, there was there was Helen Caldwell. Um, yeah. There was uh, Elaine Ford. Yeah. Did one uh, the year before. She was falling from a helicopter, if you remember, uh, hanging right. from a rope. So there was that. Yeah. Roy. Tim Condren did a wonderful thing, if yes. you remember the uh, the movie Stagecoach. Well, he tried to recreate stuntman Yakima Canuts drag underneath the horses. Do you remember That's that? It. That yeah. was incredible. Yeah, I remember that. That's right. Yes, that it, it's lovely. You mentioned these names and suddenly it's all coming back because this is 
nearly 40 years ago. 40 years um, ago, you know, to remember who won the Grand National, but <laughs> but that is that is incredible. By the way, you mentioned uh, Peter Bromley there. Mm. Um, he did commentary on the 73 Grand National, yeah, which was run by won by Red Rum, yeah. uh, and it was the first of his three Grand Nationals. And it was the best commentary I've ever heard. I was the guy who handed over to him. Do you remember there was four commentators on the Grand National? And there were Michael right. Seth Smith, Michael O'Hare, me and Peter Bromley. Right. Sadly, those other three have all gone to the race courses in the sky. But mm-hmm. I'm still here. And I'll never forget Michael O'Hare. That there was a horse called Crisp. He was 25 lengths clear. Right. And as they recrossed the Manning Road, back to you, Peter Bromley. And, and, and the horse was 20 lengths clear, jumping the last. And I'll never forget, he came to the elbow and suddenly Crisp is tiring and Red Rum is closing the gap. But I don't think he's going to get there. Crisp is walking. walking. Defeat is facing him in the face now. And he's got it. It was, it was. So yeah. those guys, the way they described it on radio. And I'm glad you mentioned it there. They, they, I'll never, ever forget him. Great stuff. Peter Bromley was just a wonderful, wonderful. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, Peter O'Sullivan, quite, quite rightly uh, oh, known as the, as the voice of racing, of course. And, and when you saw the race and you had Peter's uh, uh, Peter O'Sullivan's commentary on it, right? When you mm. listened to the race, because obviously uh, Peter was predominantly doing either course commentary or radio commentary. Uh, the, mm. the national used to go out either on Radio Two or as the light program, as it was back then, or either as Radio Five yeah. Live, and. When he says Crisp is walking, I had absolutely no doubt that Crisp was walking. I mean, it made it very evident. He was uh, uh, the one that I missed. I, I when I did the commentary on the seventy three Grand National, I was twenty two years of age. I'm, I'm still the youngest ever commentator on the Grand National, right? And I did uh, seven of them. I did all red rums, but then I got the job with ITV, and so I left BBC Radio to join ITV, yep. and that was in uh, March uh, eighty one. And then the first week in April, it was a Grand National. So that's the one Bob Champion won. And won, I yeah. wasn't there. I wasn't commentating because I had there. moved on oh, to no. ITV. Yeah. So I presented the ITV7 from uh, Stockton, uh, as it was then. And uh, I'd gone to my mum's house to watch it in, in near Middlesbrough, Nunsall. And uh, we watched Bob win the Grand National together. You know, came back from cancer to win the Grand National. Greatest thing of all time. Mm. Still is. And he's raised so much money for the Bob Champion Cancer Trust. Uh, but what was interesting, and this is before mobile phones, I was sitting there watching, we're cheering up. My mum and I were so pleased. We had a cuddle, because we used to call him her son, you know, because he was <laughs> our best pal and all that when we grew up. And 10 minutes later, the phone went. And I thought, who's this? You know, this is before mobile phones. The house phone went. And it was Champ on the line from Aintree. Right. And I said, Champ, well done. You've just won the Grand National. He said, yeah. He says, but I've got to say, I was watching you doing the racing on the ITV7 today. It stopped it. You, you need to improve if you want to keep doing your job on TV. <laughs> uh, and he said, anyway, I've got to go now. David Coleman wants to do it. <laughs> See you soon. Well done. Uh, and that's... Oh, honestly dear. true story that's the wonderful. mark of the man isn't it I mean, he's absolutely spent exactly. he's been doing so exactly. much wonderful work for uh for alder hay and all the other extraordinary hospitals that he does stuff agreed for it's, it's well spectacular said. uh derek I, I, I can't thank you enough i really can't thank you enough it's oh, been an absolute pleasure. joy it's been an absolute joy speaking to you uh not only about uh, stunt challenge but also reminiscing about some of those great race meetings as well uh so i'm very grateful to you thank you very much indeed and uh, I, I look forward to speaking to you again in some other capacity perhaps Give us a call anytime. And well done on talking about things that happened in the past. The, I know we say the good old days, you know, the, the old timers used to say that when we were young, and now we're doing it a little bit. But it's great. People talking about those names, the stunt guys, the stories. I will never, ever forget them. So thank you for bringing back great memories. A great pleasure. Thank you. So there you go. That's, uh, that's it for this week. I enjoyed that. That was a good chat with Derek. And uh, remember that... This year, your Christmas parcel uh, on Christmas Day, from me to you, is Stunt Challenge 83. That will be premiered on Christmas Day. So please, if you don't already do so, subscribe to the channel so that you can get more up-to-the-minute updates uh, uh, and we'll provide you with all the very best in uh, video material that we can get our hands on that's related to stunt work the world over. Uh, So thank you very much indeed for joining me once again. Next week we'll do it all again, and we'll see you again the same time. Until then, 
Bye for now.